Okay, we're going to hang this door here. We've measured the opening first. It's 870. That means the door we're going to put in it is an 820 door. So that gives us 20 mil either side for the door jam and about five mil or so behind each side for packing. Stores come in standard sizes, 520, 620, 720 and 820. That's the width of them. And all of them are two meters and 40 high. That's the height of the door. So first thing we need to do is check the jam, uh, the opening I mean. We've got plaster overhanging here, which is gonna get in our way for trying to put packing and everything in. So you just have an old handsaw that's no good anymore. You use this for cutting plaster. Just run it down the stuff. Get all that extra scrap of plaster off. Way the door opens. I've already had a look at the plan and the hinges are on this side so the door opens like this which means when you face the door and you can see the hinges when the door is closed that whichever side those hinges are on it's called a right hand hinge or a left hand hinge. So we're facing the door as it opens towards us, hinges are on the right hand side makes it a right hand hinge door. If the hinges were here and the door opened that way as you open it towards you, hinges on the left would make it a left hand opening door. It's a right hand opening door. So what we do is grab our pre-hung jam set here, which already has the hinges and latches attached. So you can get pre-hung jams without the latch, or you can just get standard jams without the hinge or the latch. So we open this up first. There are our door stops, which we'll do later. Now, to make sure we end up hinging it the right way, you get one of them, stand it in place, make sure your hinges are on the right hand, right hand side, like I said before, a right hand hinge, and mark that the top. Because you see, if I spin it over the other way, like this, the hinges are on the wrong side. You turn it over, that would be a left hand hinge. So we've got to make sure when we're cutting the styles or cutting the jam that we don't get the top and the bottom mixed up. So if you just stand it in the opening, make sure it's the right way, mark it top, and now we know that that's the top. Same here, we grab the pre-hung latch side, the latch faces towards the way the door is going to shut. Same thing, you mark this the top up here. So now we know what's the top and we'll cut them shortly. We'll make our way into the room where the door is. This, this particular door is a glass door and to make sure we've got this door up the right way because is that the top or the bottom or is that the top or the bottom? Same thing, we look at the hinges. So face the hinges towards us and the latch there at the moment that would be opening to the left, which is the wrong way. So which probably means the door is upside down. Also, if you have a look on here, it's upside down. I'll just spin it over the other way so you're looking at it the wrong way. Have a look on top of the door. It's a two, meet, a two meter and 40 by 820 by 35 mil fixed. RMIP, that's just probably a code for the manufacturer. 25 mil hole for the latch. So the hole for the latch is 25 mil. Most doors you get a, like a 50 mil, a much bigger hole. But because of the type of door handle we're using here, we needed a smaller hole. So it's 25 mil door latch hole and right hand hinged. All right, now if we stand it up and have a look at it though, you can see it's on the left hand side, which means this door is actually upside down.
So we get it the right way. Now the hinge is on the right hand side. It says on the door that it's a right hand hinge. We're using it in a right hand hinged opening, so that's the way it goes. So what we want to do here also is somewhere on here just mark the top so we don't get confused later on once we start to lay it here. Latch it on the right side facing the right way. So what we're going to do first is lay it into our door holder here. Of glass in it. So what happens is you have a wedge cut in this block here and then that holds the door in place for you. Now what we're going to do, I'll just pause it. Okay, we need to use this latch position on the style to figure out where it is. But if you have a look, it's sticking out a little bit. And you can't just bang these with a the hammer because if you bang the latch with the hammer hard, you can mess up the mechanism. So you use a screwdriver to stick it in and turn it so that it pulls the latch down. And then you can lock the rest of it in without damaging it. Okay, so that's now in position. So we're going to check the latch of the door. We, we know which end is the top of the door by where we have it marked, which is... So I mark the top down here, so this is the top here. Okay, so we match that up with the top up here on our, on our um, door jam. And we click that into the latch. So we've got top of the door jam here, top of the door here, so we know that it's the right way. And we have the latch going into the latch or strike strike block. What we do is Center that on it. Now, if, when you slide it, you can, you can feel there's a bit of movement there. I don't know whether you can see that or not, but if I move the style, the jam back and forward slides. So, what I want to do is we slide it one way and mark the top up here like this, mark the top of the door. Then we slide it back the other way, mark the top of the door again, come down to the bottom. Same thing. Oh, there's a piece of packing there in the way, so we need to take that off. That piece of packing would be there to protect the door while it's being carried around and transported, being so heavy. Just pull them off out of the way. Put this back on. Um, two marks close together so what we want to do is use exactly halfway between those two marks to take our measurement from now because we've got a strip tongue and groove flooring we're only going to have a 10 mil gap below the door depending on whether it's carpet or vinyl or tiles the gap between the door and the floor changes or how long you have to make it make sure we've got the right end so this is the bottom and we want 10 mil below that. So we take the center of those two lines out there somewhere and we come down 10 mil and that's where we're going to, cut, going to cut it. Now this one here is a bit tricky because we've got tiles and a strip floor so we've actually got to do the bottom of this a little bit differently. Where the latch is we've got to come down just a little bit more. You don't normally have to do this but it's a bit of a unique situation here. I just need to leave that little piece on. So, the, so I'll cut along there and then just leave that little piece there. Now up the top end, there's our two marks again. So we find the centre of them and come up. This time we come up 8 mil, and I'll explain why in a minute. So I mark 8 mil. That's where I'm going to cut. 
Now, if you'll zoom back and go back that way, I'll grab a door head and show you why I'm making an 8mm. Part of the pre-hung jam sets is that you get this here. The head is already checked out to take the um, jam. So if you have a look, this is the thickness of my ruler is 10 mil. So it's bigger than that. Half of the thickness of the ruler is five mil. And if you stick that in, there's just a little bit more timber there. So I know that the depth of that checkout is six mil. So we've got to add six mil to it. Plus we need a two mil gap at the top of the door. So that means from the top of the door, we need to cut this eight mil longer. So I'll just double check that we've got that right. From the top of the door, eight mil longer is that mark there. So we'll cut that off. Just pause it. Now, there's a couple of ways to cut this. You can either check the blade that it's on the mark and then cut it. I like to cut away from the mark and then work the main back towards it. So if you zoom in and actually look at that area there and just watch what it is I do. Can you see that area? Yep. funny little step, you need to cut to the long point first. And I'll cut the rest of that by hand later. Okay, back into the bedroom. Okay, so now this one's cut to length. We've just got to cut the bottom later in a special way with the handsaw. But while the door is in this position, we need to plane the edge of it. So we're going to pull the latch out. You just stick the screwdriver right through and pull up like that to get it out. Just sit the latch somewhere in your nail bag or whatever. But now, as the door closes, I'll try and show you on this one actually come in. As the door closes, the back edge of the door, because the door is on a bit of an angle, if it was square, it would nearly hit the jam. But then once the door is shut, that edge there, we need that gap. So if you left it square, there's a danger that the back edge can touch the jam as you're closing the door. So what we've got to do is plane that back edge off. So instead of being square, it needs to be on a bit of an angle. I don't know, can you see the gap behind the square there? There's a slight gap. It's only a couple of mil, but basically we've got to take it off square. So that means when you're looking at the door, you have to think of which way it's going to close. The hinges are on the side of the room, so that means the jam is going to be on this side. So we want to plane off this edge of the door. Now one of the tricks that I've been taught is that if you don't want the plane to touch one edge, you put a pencil line down it. So I'm putting a pencil line down the edge that I don't want the plane to touch but I want to take it off the other edge to get it out of square. So we just use a nice long hand plane, check the blade sticking out a little bit, it's nice and sharp. It's not quite out enough. see but it's finger joint in this timber so you've got a piece of wood there another piece of wood there another piece of wood there and they're finger jointed so when the guys glue this timber together they don't think about which direction the grain is they just glue them together so you could have one piece here with the grain going this way 
then the next piece, the grain, could be going back the other way. So it makes it really difficult to uh, play with the grain, things like that. Okay, that feels a little bit of coming from this end, so it's start uh, here. You're just taking it off the back edge, get the drawer a little, the edge of the drawer just a little bit out of square. another 10 mil down from that 
on, and 10 mil on this edge like this little corner piece which is really unusual you don't normally have to do this so I'll cut to that line there and have to cut the rest by hand later alright I might as well mark the top while I'm at it so the top remember is 8 mil above the top of the door so the mark I've got there is the longest point so from there I mark up 8 mil so mark up 8 mil from there if anything if you if you're a bit unsure of your marks if anything make it a little shorter rather than longer because you can always lock the top of the jam the head of the jam up but if it's too long you can't do anything to bring it down and then you have to take the hinges off and try and shift the door up so this this cut really needs to be very accurate so that it all works so double check it yep we're on about seven or eight mil above the top of the door so i'll cut this we're always using our glasses and earmuffs for the drop saw square they're actually beveled back they're actually beveled back in, in that direction so that when the arc comes along it hits this edge so this size the, this front piece here if you measure the front piece the inside edge it measures about 113 mil but if you measure this back edge it measures about 110 mil so they've just got a slight bevel on these edges. So if you're ever doing a jam that's not pre hung and you're using jam material, you've got to make sure that you put the jam in the right way with the bevel facing backwards like that. Okay, once we've got that on, we've got to cut this extra bit of timber off at the top here. So we'll simply use the saw stool and the hand saw because this piece that's overhanging here is going to get in the way, so we just cut it off out of the way. Simply run the 
handsaw down the edge of each jam. Now some people like to leave them on and make their start opening sizes big enough to accommodate that. But that means you need lots of packing in there. I don't like doing that. I'd rather cut them off and have it nice and tight. So we stand it up and carry it out. And there you go, it's ready to start nailing up. Now the first thing we do is figure out, for instance, the gap here, whether there's a piece of skirting makes it to the wall and whether to pack it this side or that side. I don't think it's really going to matter because it's going to be tight either way. And we've thrown out all our scrap skirting. How do we know there's a piece in there? If you grab that piece of scrap skirting. All right, so they've plastered this corner for us. So that means really we can go this way, but they haven't plastered this corner. So what we want is the arc to fit right into the corner so we have a look and make sure because if we go this way it only just covers it's probably a bit loose if anything we want to go back that way and have it so it's just about right so you get that position there and then you have a look and see how many packing pieces it takes to get that position so I've got a bucket here full of pieces of packing that are cut to length I'll grab two or three of them, put this in position, put some packing behind it, and see whether that's about right. Okay, that's about perfect. Just a little bit of a lip there, so it's got three pieces of packing. So what I'll do is I'll work on that, get the door jam nailed roughly into position first, and then I'll hang the door. So you can stop for a minute. Um, so what I do, I figured out three pieces of packing, suit the piece of arc there. That then gives me, on this side, it had two pieces of packing. Three pieces there, two pieces there, and then I did the same down the bottom. Now at this stage, I just nail it in roughly. So I've got two nails where the hinge is, two nails where the hinge is, a couple of nails top and bottom here, just to hold it enough to hang the door. Because if I go around and pack it and nail it, it could be all wrong and I've got to move it anyhow. So we just do as little as possible and then we hang the door. If you come onto this side, you'll see how to do that. It's a pre-hung jam, so all the hinges are already in, you just gotta take the pins out. Don't lose them, just keep them on you somewhere safe. Might even just hold them in your hand. You put the top one on first, see how I'm resting the door on my foot. Now, normally that would work if we're doing carpet where there's about a 30 mil gap, but that's way too high to get it on the hinge. So I'm gonna to have to drop it down and actually just lift it up onto that top hinge. Get it in, once it's in that hinge, I'll take one of your pins, put a pin in to hold the top, put the bottom pin in, down that should be it. Now we'll just have a, a bit of a look. We've got a good gap here. We've got a good gap all the way down there. So what I might do is go along and put two pieces of packing and nail this one up first. So we've got one at the bottom, one at the top. So we put now one in the middle about where the striker plate is. And you put your nails just underneath the piece of packing in case you've got to get the packing out later because it may not be right so a couple of pieces of packing a couple of nails 
and then we go halfway between the middle one and the hinges and put another piece in just here. A couple of nails underneath the packer. That way too, if the packer drops or falls out when you loosen it, it just drops down onto the nails without um, dropping right out of the door. Same thing, couple of nails underneath it. And we just check what that's like. Now look, it's got a fairly good gap up there. It's not, not real good. It needs a bit of fine adjustment, but it's pretty close. Good gap at the top. Now our problem is the door frame down the bottom is hitting it. So I can't actually shut the door. So I'm going to take some packing out of that and move it over. So you just use your chisel to leave the nails up a little bit. Pull some of that packing out. This is why you put your nails underneath the packing so you don't lose it. Just slide it out, take one piece out, sit it back on top of the nails, hit it back in. Because I've hit it back in further than what it was nailed, I might need to punch these nails to make sure they go back properly. And now let's see how that works. Alright, the gap down the bottom is good. Gaps here good, but we're at a level. Now one of the things that unfortunately we can't really change here is if the floor is at a level, um, and this, that, that if, for instance, if the floor is at a level and this one is actually lower than this one, you end up with this sort of situation. But that's okay. If it's tight, I can just knock that back up. So we open up the door, just knock this up a little bit out of the way. again. Alright, nice gap across the top, gap down the side. So what I'll do now is I'll finish packing it and checking all the gaps, make a nice gap all the way around. So no need to keep filming that. You, all you do is you use packing. If it's less than one full packer, you can either use wedges or you can plane a piece of packing down in half and use a thinner piece of packing. But you do what you use packing and wedges and get the, the gap right. It takes a bit of fiddling around, so we're not going to film that. I'll do that and then we'll come back. Okay, so we've put the door jam in, we've hung the door, we've made sure the gap between the door and the door jam is all even all around, and now we come to put our door stop on. I've already cut this to length, and you always put the headpiece in first, and it just fits, it's like a little, little bit loose, it's like a perfect fit. So this is where you need a, a hand off somebody else to hold the door shut. So if you come and have a look on this side, if you come right over this side, what I'll get uh, Damon to do, and Damon's the one holding the camera, is shut the door and then pull the door to the front of the latch and see how it's flush with the jam here. Now he has to hold it in that position while I push the door stop against the door and nail it from the other side. So we'll pause the camera, we'll do that and then we'll shut now, if you've got carpet on the floor, you can usually get away with a bit of a gap at the bottom. So then what I would normally do is actually just measure with me tape the length of these. But because it's a strip floor, I've got to make sure this door stop is hard down on the floor. So what you do is make sure it's square, hard down on the floor, and then we mark it to length exactly so that it'll fit in there. Now I'll cut both of these, and then we'll come back and nail them. Okay, and we'll pause again. Okay, we've cut our door stops to length. And now we use a smaller plane to arras the edges of them to make it a bit neater. So we just run down, just take the edge off it. Do the same the other side. Now the, the edges that are nailed hard against the door jam, we don't arras them because we want them nice and square. The edge that is exposed to the room, is the edge that we put the arras on and get that, that edge a good seam. So these two edges are arras, they face out into the room. The other two edges we leave nice and square. So this is cut to length, so it should fit in here nicely. 
So because the top door stop is already in the right place, we hold this hard up, hard up to the top door stop and make it exactly flush with it and then put a nail up near the top. All right, that'll hold it in place. And we already know that the top one's in the right place, so we do the same with this door stop. Arrows the edge of it. Always laying our plane on its edge instead of face down so that the blade doesn't get blunt. Stand the edge that we just planed. So now we've got two edges that have got an arras on them and two edges that are nice and square. Same thing, we nail that flush with the top because we know that the top one's in the right place. So you go hard up to the top, flush with the stop that's there. Nail that in place. Now, Damon will do the, are we still going? Oh, yeah. Damon will do the same thing. He'll hold the door shut, flush down the bottom. So I'll show you that, the door. See, we've already got the top one in, so that's nice and flush. And it does, it's got a little bit of a rattle, but when we put the bottom one in, it should be right. Now, if I nail it from the other side without someone holding it, what will happen is I'll accidentally push the door this way by pushing it hard against it. So I need someone here to hold the door flush and in the right spot. So we'll do that and then we'll come back and give you a look at it. Okay, we have the door stop hard against the door up the top here. We have it hard against the door down the bottom here. And we leave a gap in the middle. You can see there's a slight gap there, only a couple of mil. The reason for that is that when someone goes to shut the door, you know how people just push the door shut and it shuts by itself? Leaving a gap here gives the door a bit of flex in the middle so that when someone swings it shut, it'll hit the jaw stop and the door will move in and latch. If you had this hard against it, what'll happen is the door won't shut properly. When people go to swing it, it'll hit the door stop and bounce off without shutting. So you leave a bit of a gap in it so the centre of the door, when it shuts, comes this way, clicks into place, and now it's shut properly. On this side, if you swap sides, on this side here, you just leave a gap, an even gap all the way along. Doesn't need to touch the door, just give it a couple of mil gap so it doesn't rub on any of the paintwork. Okay, now we'll do the door, the arcs, the arcs around the door. If you come this side again, you see the door, Shuts nicely, doesn't sort of rattle. Door's got a, this door's got a bit of flex in it, so if you push in the middle, it rattles, but if the wind's blowing on the door, it's pretty good. Now, you see I've used wedges, so now that I've got the door stock on, I can have a look. Just make sure before I put my architraves on that the gap, the margin around the edge of the door is all nice and even. It's all nice and even down there. If you have a look, you may not be able to see that, but it's a bit fat down the bottom here. So I need to just pack that over a little bit to bring that over and make that more even with the others. So I'll just grab a piece of packing. Now it's important to do this before you put the architraves on, because once the architraves are on, it makes it too difficult uh, to fix up later. So I'll just get a bit of packing in there. And you go beautiful now, it's much more even gap all the way. Double check this side. I reckon the same thing. This one looks a bit um, a bit skinny there. I'll take that wedge out. Knock this back. Yeah, it's just a little bit too much. So it just needs a fraction of it, this one. Hence we use the use the wedge. Bring it over a little bit until we're happy with it. Because the wedge is so fine, you just break it off. Normally, if they're a bit thicker than that, and you bend them like that, they'll push the jam out. Yep, I'm happy with that. The gap's nice and even. Okay, so now we'll put the architraves on. What you do for the architraves is give it a, a gap at the top. So we use a piece of packing and make the gap of the architrave 
between the edge of the architrave and the edge of the door jam, one piece of packer thick. So we put a pencil mark there, thickness of the packing, pencil mark there, thickness of the packing. I'll just get that out of the way. Okay, now that's where the edge of our architrave will go. So that'll give us the height that we can measure to. So we measure off the floor, hard down on the floor, and we measure up to our line there, and it says about two meters and 77. So we'll make it just a fraction shorter because we're on the cement sheet, we're on tile, so it can come up a little bit. So I'll make this one two meters and 75. So you can pause it there. Okay, so we have this, this arc already on. Make sure the margin is even. You work your way around, you check this join. I'm happy with that join. So if that join's okay, I mark where this is, and then I cut this on the saw. So I'm going to do that. You can pause it if you like. Okay, so we're ready to nail it. We use the MDF glue because we're using MDFR. Put a bit of glue on there and use your finger to make sure the whole area is covered. Good lot of glue to make sure the joint stays closed nicely, like that there. Now when you're nailing the arc tray, instead of nailing it in the right position level like that, what you do is you hold the corner here in the right place here, but just drop it down a little bit so that it's down to about there and nail it just here somewhere. And then what you do is when you push this back up, it tightens the joint. So you push this back up to where it's supposed to be. Like that, make sure the gap in the middle is right. Got my nails on top. Once you've nailed it, you need to punch any nails that aren't, haven't been hit home properly. There's a couple here just sticking out a little bit, so we punch them in. Then we use a small 20mm brad on top to nail the it might be better off coming around the other side. Nail on top to hold the joint in. So just nail it down there. Wipe right, the glue off. Now the architrave is sticking out a little bit. On one side there for some reason. Got like a bit of a gap. So what we have to do, we can fill that gap there's a gap underneath there, you can fill that with no more gaps. For some reason it's not going back. There must be something in the way. So what we do is you leave it there, painter will fill that with, but we need to make the two faces of the arc traves even. So you just use a sharp chisel, take a little bit off. So they're all nice and even. Probably a bit too much, but that. Then you use a piece of sandpaper. And then you can see you rub your hand over it. It's all nice and smooth in the same plane. So when it gets painted, it'll all look okay. And that gap under there, no more gaps will fill that one. So now what we do, is I'm gonna put the door back on, because I wanna make sure that the door fits properly before we put this other architrave on here. So if you just pause it for a minute. So now we work our way around. We're up to checking if this one fits. Now, it's not a bad fit, but you see it's got a gap at the front there. That means the architraves have folded back a little bit like that, which opens up the front. So I've got to undercut this a little bit or plane the back edge off it. 
So I'll try and save a bit of time going to the drop saw. Try and just plane a bit off the back edge. So what I'm trying to do is just plane this sort of back edge area here without touching the front. This will be set out too far. I'm going to go to the drop saw and just take a little bit off the long point and try and close that gap up. So if you just hold on a minute, pause it while I go cut. Okay, I've gone to the drop saw and changed the angle a little bit to cut it. Now if you have a look and push that up there, hold the margin here right, hold it hard against there, nice tight fit. Okay, I'm happy with that. So we put some glue on it, same as last time, because we're using MDF, we put MDF glue on it. Spread it around. Same as before, we um, try and push it over a little bit before we nail it and then let it go, come back and then push this over, tightens the join. Keeping the margin all right, even all the way down. couple of nails into the stud. Same thing then, I use a bread to nail the top edge. So nail down from the top, try and at this stage hold them flush, which they are. That nail just pulls it up nice and tight, wipe off any excess glue. This one's so good I don't need to use the chisel, just a bit of sandpaper to get it all even. There you go, nice smooth tight joint. And that's it. So put the we put the door jam on, we've hung the door, put the door stop on, put the architraves around it, the door is now finished. That's it.